Thank you, Barbara. Hi, I'm uh, Vinny. I'm a customer solutions engineer here with Google Southeast Asia. So what that means is I work with uh, advertisers and agencies, a lot like people in the crowd here today, to, uh, I guess, better utilize Google technologies to help your online business. So one of the products I spend a lot of time with is Google Analytics. So it's actually quite good to be here in front of a huge engaged crowd to help, uh, I guess, share our insights uh, with the product that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So I guess you would have gathered now from uh, Barbara's talk that really uh, site tracking has to become an integral part of your online strategy. And there's really no excuse for not being able to track any site uh, that makes a part of your online presence. So before we sort of dive into uh, the guts of Google Analytics, I just want to show you how easy it is to get started. So uh, for those of you not familiar with Google Analytics, getting started is really easy. You just go to google.com slash analytics. It's a web-based service. And you sign up with your regular Google account. So it's no different to signing in uh, with G into Gmail, for example, or even into AdWords. Uh, if you're already logged into AdWords, you can just click on the Analytics tab there to get access to your Analytics account. And then once you're in there, uh, you just start viewing the reports that you've already got set up. So what about tracking a site itself? Well, setting that up is also pretty straightforward. Um, you log into your account, this is your settings screen, and you would just choose add a website profile down there. Um, just fill in the form here, and really all you have to worry about is putting in your domain name, click finish. And then, this is probably the most complicated part, but this is where it's nice to pass the buck. Just copy the code and pass it onto your webmaster. And uh, what they should be able to do is then paste that code across all their HTML pages. And if your site runs off a template, it's even easier. You just paste it into the template, and then it's across all your pages in a matter of seconds. And then tracking starts immediately. So you just log into your account and start viewing your reports. Um, if you're not familiar with analytics, actually using the product is quite easy. Uh, we've got a number of uh, little help uh, tidbits in the UI to help you get started with using analytics. And one of my favorite features is a little about this report link, which is there on all the reports. And despite the many years I've been using analytics, I still make use of this. Uh, so if you're at a report and you don't know what it's about or what you should be doing with it, you should click on this link and you get a little blurb explaining what to do. Uh, similarly, when you're dealing with metrics and you're not sure what this metric means, there's always a little question mark bubble there. If you click on that, you get a little definition. And that hopefully gives you a bit of insight into what you should be doing with your data. Um, and then, of course, if you hit sort of more trickier issues, we always have links to our help center, which is uh, full of uh, articles, about uh, 3,000 plus articles. And there's also a link to our analytics help forum, where we have Googlers answering analytics users' questions. So that's uh, how easy it is to get started with Google Analytics. Okay, so I just wanted to provide that as a very quick introduction. And now we'll sort of go and get into, I guess, the, the business side of things. Uh, the, uh, the main attraction, as I would say. So we, uh, what I want to do is just walk you through Google Analytics, show you some of the reports, and just show you how you can be manipulating those reports to get the data that you want, that's useful to you, so that you can take it out to the rest of your company and take action on it. So if you picture this as being your website, Google Analytics tracks a lot of information for you, but you could think about it as tracking it along three, <coughs> three key dimensions. The first is, how are people entering your site? Um, then once they're on your site, how are they actually uh, behaving and engaging with your content? And finally, uh, when and why are they leaving? And this is probably one of the most important things. Um, so what Analytics does, it, uh, collects a lot of information, a lot of data for you. So what we do is we categorize all that information into five report categories. Uh, and you can think of it as sort of giving you the full picture of the full story about your website, right? So we have reports on visitors. So this tells you essentially the who, who is coming and visiting your site. Uh, you know, what language do they speak? Which country are they living in? Then we have traffic sources, which sort of tells you the how. How are they coming to your site? Uh, then we have content, which is all about what, right? So what are they actually interacting, once, uh, interacting with once they're on your site? Uh, what do they love? What do they hate? And then finally, we also help you answer the why using goals and e-commerce. So every website has a purpose. And uh, so these reports show you whether these visitors are fulfilling your site's purpose. 
And then I like to think of custom reporting as a plus one. It's a new feature. And it allows you really to break away from the standard reports that we provide you and create reports that are truly meaningful to you. And Stephanie will uh, cover this in more detail later on. Okay, so let's take a quick tour of the uh, analytics reports. So when you log in and start viewing the reports for one of your profiles, the first thing you're brought to is a personalized dashboard. So every user gets their own dashboard. And you can think of this as like a bookmark to your favorite report. So once you set up your dashboard, it's as simple as just logging in every day and uh, viewing meaningful data to you, uh, what's meaningful to you at a glance. Um, so the five categories of reports that I spoke about, you can access them from the menu on the left there. So when we drill into this menu, you're first provided with just high level overview uh, data about this particular category. But we can start drilling into more specific data to get, again, uh, data with more context and more meaning for you. So uh, let's drill into the map overlay report and use that as an example for some of the things I want to show you. So the map overlay report is an interactive heat map that shows you where in the world your visitors are coming from. If we scroll further down the page, we'll see our sort of our standard data layout, right? So we um, across about 99% of our reports, this is kind of the standard layout for your data, a uh, straightforward table. Uh, what I would just want to point your attention to are uh, two pieces of terminology here, dimensions and metrics. Uh, you're going to come across uh, these words a lot today, and also in, in uh, help center articles and web analytics articles that you read. And just to put it simply, metrics are anything with, with a number attached to it. Uh, so if you look at it in context of this table, Anything that's a column is essentially a metric. And then dimensions, uh, anything that's sort of described in, in the form of a, a word. And it, it just uh, relays sort of variable data we've collected about a user. So speaking of dimensions, if you would actually hover your mouse over one of these dimensions, you'll most likely see that it sort of changes to indicate that it's a link. What this means is, is that you can usually drill down into a dimension to get start viewing data at a more granular level. So again, it's about getting the data that you want that's uh, relevant to you. So let's use this as an example. So if we, uh, it's nice to know we're getting a bulk of our visitors to the Google store from the United States, but we also want to know a bit more about these particular visitors. So we can drill down further and start getting a breakdown by visitors uh, by state in the US. And I could even drill down uh, one level further and explore California by city. Okay, so what we're seeing on screen now are all our uh, visitors from California broken down by city and we you know we find out things like how many visits have they made what's the average time they spent on site what are the bounce rates and so on so that's all useful information but we can definitely get a lot more out of this uh, so if you've set up your account to track goals on your website and also to track e-commerce activity you'll see these two tabs across the top of about again 95 percent of your reports so what it allows you to do now is no matter what data you're looking at, no matter what dimensions you're exploring, you can now sort of uh, correlate that with goal conversion rates and e-commerce activity to see how well they're influencing the success of your website. So let me show you an example. So same as the previous report, but now I've flipped over to the goal conversion tab. So what this report now shows me is all my visitors from California and what are their conversion rates. So in this account, we've set up, uh, we've defined a conversion to be a completed order. Uh, so this gives us some interesting insight, right? So for example, we see that uh, even though we get a lot of traffic from LA, it's really not converting as well as the traffic from San Francisco. And we're getting good conversion rates, about 2% from Piedmont. So that, that's some interesting insight to have. And now we can also get some added information by flipping over to the e-commerce tab. So our account is also tracking everything we sell on our website, and it can uh, relate that back to the types of visitors who made those purchases. So here we get some added context. So even though we saw in the previous screen Sunnyvale wasn't converting that well, um, the few conversions we do have is actually quite valuable to us. There's a per visit value of about $4. So we can use these two pieces of information together to help us with, uh, you know, inform our marketing, not just online marketing, but even our offline campaigns as well. So I might, uh, from an online perspective, I might decide that I want to um, have some geo-targeted campaigns specific to these particular cities, and maybe offline-wise as well. Maybe we were thinking of uh, 
uh, you know, mail bombing everyone and placing pamphlets in everybody's mailboxes. So based on this data, I might say, if we've got a limited number of pamphlets to go around, let's just focus on San Francisco, Sunnyvale, and people. So that's all well and good, but sometimes we want to know a lot more about these visitors. It's nice to know they're from San Francisco, they're converting well, they're spending well, but what else can we learn about them? So a lot of times, again, we can drill down one level further into these dimensions, and you'll come to a screen like this, and what I want to call your attention to is this little dimension drop-down box here. It allows you to start cross-segmenting this data with uh, other information we've collected about the visitors. Uh, so we could start uh, you know, exploring, for example, where are they located by country? So in this example, it will always be the US. Uh, you know, what language have they got their browser set to? And what I'm going to do is actually segment by keyword in this example. So this report, uh, what it's essentially answering for me, a, a business question, is which keywords are converting well for me with my audience in San Francisco? So what I've essentially done is I've drilled into San Francisco visitors, uh, cross-segmented by keyword there, and then I've flipped over to the goal conversion tab. And so what this report now tells me is which keywords are bringing in visitors from San Francisco, and which of these keywords are actually valuable to me, which of these are actually working for me. And if we look at all these keywords, it's really only these two keywords that are doing anything for us. So we really have to focus on the ideas of a store or a shop or a market when dealing with our San Francisco audience. Okay, so once you have this data and you start getting this insight, um, it's always a good idea then to start sharing this data with other stakeholders in your company to get you know, buy-in on the actions you want to take or to get added insights. So analytics makes it easy for you to grab this data and share it with the rest of the organization. Um, again, across all your reports, you're going to see this uh, familiar interface up the top. And one thing you can do is actually export the data in a variety of formats. So there's regular PDF, or you can even export it in CSV, open it up in Excel, and, and do your own data manipulation there. Um, that, that's a bit painful. You have to keep going to the same report and actually exporting the report all over, all over again on a daily basis. So what you could do is set up a recurring email so these reports end up in your inbox. And that's pretty straightforward to set up. Uh, the screen looks a bit scary, but it's really not. Uh, two, two things to point your attention to is you can set the, the frequency with which you want these reports to end up in your mailbox. So it could be daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly. And what's also nice is you can CC in other recipients for these reports. So these could be people who are external to your organization, maybe it's your marketing agency, maybe it's a consultant. Uh, you don't want them to have full access to your data, so you can just give them little tidbits of, of your data. And uh, sometimes it's also good for the people who you don't want to give access to because we have one in every company, they go in and they mess up your settings, right? So this way they get access to the data, but they can't actually mess up your settings. And then, uh, if you've been following me, it probably, uh, you've probably noticed it took me about six to eight clicks to get to this report, you know, San Francisco keywords. Again, you don't want to be doing that every day, especially if you're suffering with a slow internet connection. So again, any report you drill down into, and it's something you're going to be using quite frequently, you can use the Add to Dashboard button uh, to add this report to the dashboard I showed you earlier on. So then you just log in in the morning, and there, there, there's all that data sitting, waiting for you, uh, right in front of you. And then um, if you wanted to drill down into it deeper, you could just uh, click on that report, and it takes you straight there, and saves you about six or seven clicks. And speaking of dashboards, I, I think dashboards are a very personal thing. Uh, we all like to see data in different ways, and we all want to see different types of data. So if you have multiple users in your organization who should be looking at these accounts, uh, looking at these reports, you should give them all each their own dashboard. And the easiest way to do that is just to add them in as users into your Google Analytics account. And it's as simple as simply just putting in their analytic, sorry, their Google account ID, and then nominating what type of user they want, you want them to be. So you can set them up as an ordinary user and restrict what, what data they get to look at as well. Okay, so another thing about, I guess, the analytics uh, product philosophy is that we, uh, we want to be sure that you guys get data in, in a meaningful manner. It's something that's useful to you. And so there are many ways to customize 
uh, the data format, right? the, the reporting formats that you have to play with on a day-to-day -day basis. So one of the first things and the easiest things is just to vary the date range that you have to work with. Right? So something as simple as just selecting, uh, reporting for a day or reporting for a week or a month or even years. So analytics is powerful enough to crunch the numbers on the fly and, and give them to you right then and there. Uh, but I think what's even more powerful with the whole date selection um, capability is the fact that you're also able to compare multiple date ranges. So this is good if you want to, say, compare year-on-year -year growth or you want to uh, identify seasonality trends. Uh, but it's also good for, you know, if you're taking action on this data, um, if you go back after today and you start taking action and then you want to prove to your boss this action actually worked, uh, this is again a good report because you could do a pre and a post analysis and get some reporting like this where we show you the current and previous trends. And hopefully, maybe all your current numbers are way above previous numbers, uh, if they're good metrics. Uh, we also give you two sets of metrics there, so you can easily compare, compare this information as well. Uh, you can do other things, like for example, you can graph multiple metrics uh, on, in, in your visualization, so to explore uh, relationships between data. Uh, you can also visualize your data in different formats as well. So, for example, you know, if, you're, if you're bored of looking at tables and numbers, you can switch to a pie chart view and get, get your data in a pie chart format. Similarly, uh, there's also a bar, chart, bar graph view. And I think one of our most favorite views within Google is the uh, comparison chart feature. So this, this is really good for identifying very quickly uh, who are your overperformers and underperformers when you're analyzing your data. Uh, so, for example, let's have a look at this uh, report here. Uh, let's say we know we're having a problem with bounce rates on our website. So, a bounce rate is a, a bounce is essentially like a one-page visit. Somebody lands, <coughs> pardon me, lands on the website and then leaves completely. So, I've pulled up our top landing pages report, and then what I've done is I've switched to the comparison feature, uh, comparison visualization, and then in our drop-down box of metrics, I've chosen bounce rate. So what we see here is the gray line down the middle represents the average bounce rate across our entire site. So at a glance, we can tell which pages, and these are the ones I've highlighted, are performing worse than our average. So these are real underperformers, and if we have to prioritize our attention, these are probably the three pages we need to focus on. Conversely, you can also identify those that are doing really well in comparison to average. So we could, for example, start having a look at this page and start to learn what's making this page successful in terms of bounce rates and take those learnings and apply it across the rest of our site. And uh, finally, speaking of comparisons, this, this view is good for kind of comparing uh, certain aspects of your websites with other aspects of your website. But sometimes you want to know, how do I compare to the rest of the world? Uh, is a 60% bounce rate good or bad? And so we try and give you that additional context as well. Um, there is a benchmarking feature in Google, Anal <coughs> Google Analytics, which allows you to opt in uh, to share your data anonymously. And then you get a view of all this aggregated data of similar websites in your vertical globally. And so then you can start comparing your performance to the rest of the world's performance in the same vertical. Because it's anonymous, uh, anonymous and aggregated data, you can never tell whose data this is, who you're comparing with, so you should not be able to see how your competitors are performing or vice versa. Okay? So that, in a nutshell, is getting started with Google Analytics and really how to just navigate the reports to be able to get to the data that you really need that's really useful to you. Uh, so now I'm going to pass it over to Stephanie who's going to talk to us about the most important aspects of Google Analytics being 